Hey everyone, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben Wardle Ward. I'm a bassoonist based in Chicago. Today is March 17th, 2020, which means that for me it's the fourth day of quarantine and self-isolation as part of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, being inside pretty much all day, uh, I got the idea that I would start posting a multiphonic a day online to YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all of that uh, to keep me occupied, to keep me busy, to give me something that motivates me to be productive every day and to share um, some sounds that I've been working on with all of you. So as a bassoonist, I've been really uh, obsessed with multiphonics for, I don't know, like 10 years now. And uh, I just really want to share some of my very favorite ones. There's not going to really be any rhyme or reason to them. They're just ones that I really love. Um, I will be taking requests for all you multiphonic fans out there and uh, I'm gonna play the multiphonic for you obviously uh, talk about it a little bit show the fingering and so forth and I'll also be playing uh, short excerpts from pieces where those multiphonics are used so you can hear them in context and hopefully also uh, explore some of the amazing new bassoon repertoire so first off this is day one episode one I'm gonna share one of my very favorite ones um, I'm just going to play it. So the nickname that I have for this multiphonic is B-flat minus left, excuse me, right hand three. And that tells you a little bit about one of the ways that we produce multiphonics on the bassoon, which is to take a bass fingering and manipulate it. So the bass fingering here is uh, low B flat, that's B flat one. And all I'm doing is I'm raising the third finger of my right hand. And in terms of when we're talking bassoon fingers, this is one, two, and three. Um, and that's creating an unstable air column that creates that beating. So one of the things I really love about this multiphonic in particular is that uh, you have these two really distinct tones that you hear oscillating really quickly. Um, that's what Pascal Galois in his book calls this a, a rolling uh, rolling note. Um, so he's that's what he calls that particular characteristic. And uh, what I love about this multiphonic is that by manipulating the embouchure in the air, by tightening a little bit, I can get that beating to go up the octave like this. <laughs> So as you can hear, the oscillation accelerates and then eventually it breaks and it jumps up the octave. Um, so that's kind of a theme that I want to explore with a lot of the multiphonics that I'll show you is that um, they're not monoliths, right? There are different zones that you can activate through combinations of different fingerings, uh, different embouchure pressure, different air pressure. And so basically, the lower the pressure of the embouchure here, the looser my lips are, uh, the lower the pitch will be and the slower the oscillation of those two beating tones. And then as I increase my lip pressure, moving up the reed and increasing the speed of the air, that's when the oscillations accelerate and when they eventually jump up the octave. So there are two short excerpts that I want to play for you. First of which is actually the uh, very last two gestures of a piece called Grandfather by Chris Fisher Lockhead. Chris is one of my very favorite composers. He's a dear friend and um, one of my closest collaborators ever, and uh, this piece is a really monstrous piece for solo bassoon that has probably more multiphonics in it than almost any other uh, solo bassoon piece. And the whole piece actually ends on this uh, B-flat minus right hand three multiphonics. So I'm going to uh, play just the last two gestures of this, and I'll throw it up on the screen so you can see it.
So through a combination of uh, dynamic embouchure pressure and uh, air manipulation there at the end, you hear the multiphonic slowly starting to break up. And at the end, I replace the third finger of my right hand, which if you hear it, it's pretty subtle, but there's kind of a slight uh, sense of there being a cadence at the very end of that. The second uh, gesture that I want to play for you is a phrase from Legno Edre II by the Italian composer Pierluigi Bellone. Um, and you can see the portion of this uh, on uh, the Square Excerpt on his website. And here what he's doing is he's starting in the upper realm of this multiphonic and then triggering the lower one where he, through changes in fingering, manipulates the beating in a really, I think, beautiful way. And then he ends up going back up into the higher harmonics of the multiphonic and triggering a, a high multiphonic that uh, is not beating more, but just a single tone that then dissipates. So here it goes. just so beautifully explores the whole idea of this audible beating in and of itself, taking it to the point where it's really uh, almost to the point where it's a rhythm, right? You can't really hear it as this oscillation anymore. It's just a rhythmic beating. And uh, that's one of the things that Bologna does really brilliantly, I think, in a lot of his music. So that's the multiphonic of the day for today. Please uh, leave me any comments. If you have any multiphonic requests, if you have any questions, um, if you want to record your own multiphonic and send it to me, um, please do so. I, you know, we're all kind of living in a different lifestyle now that we can't go outside and gather, and I thought that this would be a really nice way to stimulate some dialogue and some conversations and uh, exchanges of ideas. So please do so. I'm going to post some links below this video uh, to scores and recordings of those pieces that I showed you today. Um, and also one that I will post, i got to remember to do this, is uh, Christine Burke recently wrote a really beautiful piece for my duo with Will Overcash, uh, violinist, called Conditional. And this is one of the main multiphonics that she features in there, so I'll uh, post a link to those recordings as well. Thanks, see you tomorrow.